started this band, we had no idea that anybody was gonna really like it. You know, if I wanted to be successful in music, I shouldn't have started this band. And I knew that from the beginning, but I don't wanna make a career out of music. I just, I wanna use music to just fucking have fun and please myself. We started this band and I was like, I want to go record a record with Kurt. It's like, well, we've played nine shows. What record label is going to give us the money that it costs to go record in a very nice studio in Massachusetts? Nobody. So I was like, all right, well, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to record with Kurt. I'm going to finance the whole fucking thing myself. We're going to press a thousand vinyl records. If we sell a thousand vinyl records for eight bucks a piece, we'll be able to pay for the pressing and I'll be able to pay myself back for the recording budget. That's what we did. And within, I think, six months, the record was, was gone. I thought like, man, well, you know what? I'm gonna probably sell 500 of these within like six months. I'm gonna sit on 500 for the next year. But we put the record out and people seemed to make a connection with it. I guess the popularity was kind of confusing to me at first because we didn't tour. It kind of just happened. It really happened after a band all life. I think that record just kind of fell into everyone's player somehow. I think that coming from Todd's hardcore background, you know, he, he has a fan base in and of himself. You know, people know him from Carry On, from Terror, and from Betrayed, and he played in Blacklisted for a little while. And so he brings some of those people with him as he explores a new genre. And he also brings like a hardcore songwriting sensibility to metal. And so a lot of people who otherwise would never listen to a band that sounded like Nails are now turned on to Nails. People from a, a very much a different background than what the sort of inspiration of Nails music is. You know, people who would never hear like Drop Dead or, you know, Dismember or something like that are all of a sudden now they're, they're getting clued into that genre because Todd's brought them with him. We definitely wear our influences on our sleeves, I think. Playing the music we play was like not a lot of room for variety, but we use the variety we can to weave in and out of styles. So a little bit of hardcore. Well, it's a lot of bit of hardcore. Obviously metal in there and a lot of punk too. a bit more Bay Area thrash, a bit less crust. We have songs that might be more punk influenced. We have songs that might be more thrash influenced. We have songs that might be more hardcore influenced. We have songs that might be more metal influenced. So you can listen to the record front to back because there is that sort of variety of that, that change of pace. My favorite songs on the record tend to be the ones that are kind of like more punk rock oriented. To me, there's not much better in this world than hearing a great punk record constructed all the way through because people devalue punk music saying, oh, it's like immature. But like, you know, you look at a record like Circle Jerks, Group Sex, or you look at like any of your favorite classic punk records, there's a lot of thought that went into those records. So you could say the sound is juvenile, but all the things that go into making the records, it's like constructed very well. And that's what we wanted to do, if, if we could. You know? You can have super harsh riffs, but if you have a memorable song structure and memorable riffs, you can still have memorable songs. It's not like they're pop songs, but to a certain extent, there is kind of a pop song format. There is a lot of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus on a Nails record. I like hearing a song and hearing something with either, you know, a really memorable guitar part or a really memorable vocal line. But I like to find a mix between something that's extremely aggressive and also something that's going to stick to you. You still want to have something to, for people to grab onto. I, I actually think the vocals are catchier than ever.
I think a lot of people can relate to it. I think everybody into heavy music kind of feels normalized by it. I mean, there's definitely lyrical themes that people can relate to, too. Anything that Todd says in his lyrics, they're all definitely real. I think whether it's punk metal or hardcore, there's aggression. And I think that when you hear something like Nails, it's like you can't deny that aggression. I think we're all drawn to the pure hostility of the band, and it's definitely something that has been natural from day one. On Silent Death was the first time it felt like a real record, I guess. On Silent Death was really noisy. A lot of the songs were written to be catered around noise elements. Looking back, especially now, I feel like it figured itself out with On Silent Death. It just all came together. and then Abandon All Life was like a refined version, and then this is like the next step. It continues to kind of grow naturally. We don't ever try to force anything. Just kind of let it grow organically. When we went to go write Abandon All Life, we kind of found a different lane to go in, and noise wasn't as dominating in that record as it was on Silent Death. But we do on one of the songs on our new record, Violence Is Forever. You know, half the breakdown or slow part is, is noise, and it ends that way. Now that we have an audience and we have a fan base, it feels like a little bit of pressure and a little bit of expectation to make a record as good or better than a band of life or in Silent Death. I see him beat himself up a lot when he's not happy with how records turning out or how his songwriting is or how his, his own abilities are. Oh, we gotta do persecution again. That was not good. Oh, okay. I thought... No. This is fucked up and it's gonna be fucked up until we finish it. So let's just finish it. I think a lot of the greatest musicians are people who never feel like they've achieved their goal and that drives them and pushes them forward and pushes them to do better. I try to be a really self-aware person, but as far as the music we create and the art that we do, I just, I've never been one to hype myself up. You know, there's a lot of self-doubt and that self-doubt, if harnessed correctly, can be a, a force that propels them. I mean, I know I have a ton of it myself, but seeing Todd over almost 15 years now and how he's just been relentless in his pursuit of creating the best records that he can create, it's, it's really inspiring to me and, and I, I admire that drive in him a lot. Really all we can do is go into a room with the same mindset that we have when we were writing each of those records and just make music we like. That's what we did for You Will Never Be One of Us. I'm really excited with how this record's turning out so far. I think it's our hardest record. I think it's our heaviest record. It feels like it's the fastest record. This is the typical stuff, you know, the fast songs are faster, the slow songs are slower, the hard songs are harder. Uh, but it's all true, as cliche as it sounds. It's more calculated, it's more cunning, it's more focused in its aggression. It's maybe less wild, but it's just as severe. Dude, I never would have thought like this stuff would have happened. The only thing that was planned is that we're gonna get in a room, we're gonna make tunes, we're gonna play shows, and we're gonna come record with Kurt. So do you know all the riffs of all the records you've recorded? Um, yes, I know every single riff I've ever, I've ever recorded. It's been an interesting ride. We've gotten a lot of opportunities and, and we're very grateful. We're still getting opportunities. And I just remember it was funny because he, he asked me, hey, do you want to play bass and nails? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, all right, cool. We'll go all over the world. That has happened, so he did it. That was cool. I like my band. I like the music we make. I like hanging out with the dudes in my band. I like traveling with them. It's cool. Yes, you do. We're just stoked to be doing what we do because we like the music we play. And if it sticks, if it resonates with people, if they make an emotional connection to it, that's fucking awesome. It's just, you know, we're just trying to please ourselves. Really, it's a lot of just what do we want to hear because we listen to music that sounds like this. So when we started this band, we went into a room, we made music that we liked, we recorded it and we put it out into the world. And we think we made a fucking killer record.